Hello everyone, welcome to Aptav channel. As part of the spring annotations video series, we covered couple of annotations till now, till uh, at rest controller. And the annotation which we are picking up for today's topic is at service annotation. We will get to know more details about at service annotation, how to use, what are the different scenarios we have to use at service annotation in this video. Okay, so we know that at component is a base annotation or a stereotype annotation which is used to instruct the spring container to manage the beans of the classes which are annotated with at component. Right. Similarly, at controller and at rest controller are the specialized versions of uh, at component. They will be used to annotate the classes for web web MVC requests or the rest controller requests. Similar to at controller and at rest controller, at service is also a one type of at component annotation. But uh, so, uh, Similar to what we have seen, right? Controller and the REST controller, they are providing some additional functionality or the special special features like web request handling, HTTP request handling, or the RESTful request handling. But at service is just a specialized version of at component, but it is not doing anything special like controller or REST controller as an add-on to the component. It is also used to instruct Spring Container to manage the beans of this class, which is annotated with at service. But the special feature which comes along with at service, uh, we will see with an example. Okay, but on a high level, what at service will do? It is uh, it is also similar to at component to instruct the container. To manage the beans of the class which is annotated with that service okay so let's see with this uh, when to use that service with an example okay so this is a this is a request which comes from my client to this microservice to transfer funds okay make fund transfer request is the json object and it is having source account number destination account number what is the amount that is being transferred, type of transfer, whether it is IMPS, NEFT or RTGS or any comments are there for the transaction. Okay, this is coming to my microservice. Okay, as a post request and this is the microservice appdev.com slash api slash v1 slash transfer funds. Okay, whenever a request is reached to the microservice, the dispatcher's outlet uh, finds out the particular handler mapping method and the controller based on the URL, right? So the controller will be invoked first and whatever the object that was coming as a post request to this controller That will be stored into the request vivo object. This is these are our classes, right? So controller uh, we know it we have seen it with an example request vivo will be there suppose uh, if any business logic we have to uh, do based on the request object on the request object that we receive to the controller that we do it in the business logic uh, business component suppose if we have to convert or create the object suppose this api i mean this particular microservice call has to make a transaction entry in any of the backend systems like uh, Oracle EBS systems or mainframe systems or uh, SAP systems, right? They have to call again one more uh, service or backend service. The microservice has to call the backend services. So in such scenarios, we have to convert the request object that we received into request vivo from the client into the format that should be understandable to the backend services. So that conversion the request uh, vivo from client to request vivo to backend services that kind of conversion can be done in the assembler classes so we if we want to do any specific changes be, uh, before calling the backend service then we can uh, we will write that logic in the service classes 
we actually make the service uh, actual backend service calls we will make in the client classes whatever the object we convert right in the assembler that will be given to the client value object classes this client value object will be passed to the backend service along with the client so in client while we make the backend services right uh, backend service calls so we generally call the service calls in the microservice using rest template so a rest template will be created based on certain configurations right so uh, if at all the communication to the backend systems may has to be made via certificates or any password based authentication or uh, based on all those configurations the rest template or the http connection uh, object has to be created right so we have to configure certain parameters or the, do some configuration for the rest template so all the configuration related activities we do in the rest uh, configuration classes similarly we if we want to do some database interactions as part of this uh, microservice call along with the backend service we do the database interactions in a separate class so this is all a flow uh, when we uh, flow of classes that we execute or the that are coming into the picture in order to serve a microservice request successfully so here uh, we have seen it right uh, com controller uh, we can annotate with the at controller or at rest controller annotations right request vivo is just a controller or rest controller okay request vivo is just a java class right so we want uh, we don't want any special features we just want that to be managed by the uh, spring container so we can use the component annotation here so uh, business component uh, or the business class or the assembler class service class client class right these all are related to your service definition before you call your backend service or any other microservice you have to uh, all these classes are related to that backend service or any other microservice invocation we will write some business logic we will do some conversions between the request and response objects we will do some specific changes to service before we call the backend or microservice call and the actual backend call or the microservice call happen from the client layer so for all these annotated you know, combinations or the classes we can use the service annotation so service annotation is not providing any special feature but the uh, only feature that it is providing is if a class is annotated with service which means that a class may be doing the business logic or the class may be doing the conversions object conversions related to service invocations or that class may be doing the service specific invocations or the service specific changes or that class may be doing the service backend service or any other microservice invocations that is the advantage we will get we will be able to identify if a class is annotated with their service we will be able to identify that if that class may be doing all these functionalities okay similarly client vivo uh, this is just a vivo right uh, so we can use the component annotation so configuration and db interactions we will discuss what what annotations uh, we can use in the future videos so for now let us understand the service annotation in this way if at all you want to do and you want to do any class uh, you, you want to do the business logic in a class you want to do the service invocations in a class you want to do the conversions in a class object conversions to be understandable between your client and your backend service or your by your microservice another microservice that those object conversions in such cases you have to annotate your class with that the data service so that it gives us some modularity or readability of your close of your code what class is doing what functionality okay that is the uh, benefit we get from at service annotation it is a it is a bit different like uh, when we generate a class with a trash controller the automatic uh, response uh, http message 
conversions will be done on the java specific or the domain specific objects will be converted and pasted in the http response body that's how the special feature comes up with rest controller but when it is coming to service if a class is annotated with service then we get all these all these features classes all these feature classes will be annotated with the delete service that gives us some modularity and readability of the code on the, the what class is doing what functionality okay so let us see this with an example uh, there is some uh, difference with using the service annotation okay let us see this with an example so suppose for example i have a service okay i have a controller okay let me uh, let me make it as transaction controller and i'll make this transaction controller as rest controller and i'll give the mapping as request mapping as slash tx okay that's all now that's all my controller is having now i'll make an interface okay in general we for any services or for any client service invocation classes we don't directly make a service implementation class we first in create an interface and create the implementation classes from that interface so i'll create a transaction service interface now i'll create one class implemented from that uh, transaction service which is called as transaction service impl and that will be implemented from transaction service so that's all okay now say for example this service interface i am having couple of methods that it will make some changes to the service before calling any backend service or any other microservice say for example this is my service annotation annotated for this class okay now we will see whether this service annotation annotated on this interface is instructing the service uh, spring container to uh, to manage this as a bean okay let's see that with an example by adding some logging level so that we can see how the objects are being created logging dot level dot org dot spring framework dot beans dot factory okay beans dot factory is equal to debug i'll use okay now let me run this program as a spring let me run this project as a spring boot application uh, okay let me copy this to a notepad transaction service right let me go with transaction see our transaction controller is being managed by the container here because it is creating a bean here now let us check for transaction service as well see it is not creating any bean for the transaction service because it is an interface so uh, how a bean will be created for an interface right so we cannot use the transaction uh, service annotation on an interface instead we have to use the service annotation on the implementation classes of that interface okay let us see it now earlier we have not seen transaction service in the log when it is creating the beans right now we should be able to see it transaction service impl will be managed okay what happened
yeah see this transaction service impl is being managed by the spring container transaction controller is being managed but not the transaction service see, only impl is coming so whenever you want to use the at service annotation you have to use on the implementation classes of the interface or an abstract class not on the abstract classes or on the interfaces okay so that uh, that uh, we will be able to know that class is doing some service specific changes or some business logic or doing some service invocations another microservice invocation okay so that's an example i want to show you when to use the service annotation and what is that uh, significance of service annotation how it provides the readability and the modularity to your code that's all for today we will meet in the next video to know more details about at repository annotation okay that's all for today thank you for watching if you have any questions please add it in the comment section if you have if you like the video please give it a like and share and subscribe to my channel thank you